greet you. Farewell. Make her go with you. Have you had any trouble with them? Not at all. I will inform you if that changes. At your service. All right. What may I do for you? What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on steadfast allies. We must aim for more. Any visiting dignitaries I should watch out for? 
Sir Griffith of Denerim, a most distinguished knight of the realm. He's defeated Darkspawn, slain demons, chased down abominations. Just don't ask him about it over dinner. He spares no detail. What may I do for you? What exactly does your job entail? I meet with ambassadors from various factions and countries, and cement alliances with them. We are a young cause. Diplomacy is essential to our credibility. Then you speak for the Inquisition with these nobles? I do. Someone must foster goodwill on our behalf, as well as prevent controversy as news of us spreads. How heavily are our actions scrutinized? Make no mistake. Every noble house, every throne, is waiting to see what the Inquisition does next. Many are willing to pledge support, if offers are made in just the right fashion. I intend to see that they are. What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on steadfast allies. We must aim for more. Any thoughts on the people here? Who did you mean? I was thinking of Varric. Oh, I could listen to his tales for hours. He actually let me read a chapter of his next book he's writing. Oh, my friends would be sick with envy if they knew. It's excellent, but a bit different from his past works. Only three beheadings so far. I'd love to know how you and Sarah get along. I know she extracts gossip from the servants, and she keeps prying into things. Sarah's ability to vanish whenever her mischief's discovered must come in handy, however, I'm sure. I was thinking of Cassandra. Seeker Pentagast is a princess of the Kingdom of Nevara, although that barely seems important to her. She was not interested when I asked if we might make use of her royal relations. Still, the Inquisition would not have formed without Cassandra. She's an extraordinarily driven woman. Commander Cullen came to mind. The Commander is an intelligent, cautious man. I'm grateful he's in charge of our sending army. Still, he does sometimes resemble the man with a hammer to whom everything appears as a nail. What do you think of Vivienne? We've met a few times before at court. She remains a truly accomplished player of the game. So long as her interests align with yours, Madame Vivienne will be a most valuable ally. What's your impression of Solus? I suppose I should be wary of an apostate, but our elven mage has conducted himself with the utmost propriety. And he has the most fascinating stories. Let's speak later. Another time. Yes? I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the Circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarans or men. I have known some who were impossible to endure and some who were utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor that no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royal. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. What was it like to live in a circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every circle was different. Their Templars were different, their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content. Some were cruel, some compassionate, and some indifferent. 
The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. So tell me about your personal experience with the Circle. I enjoyed life in the Montsimard Circle, my dear. It was an edifice devoted to knowledge and refinement. And there is comfort to be had, you know, in the company of fellow mages. Those born without magic will never truly understand us. You must have been under constant supervision, being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I have never been forced to live anywhere. Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. All that was required was permission from the first enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Kirkwall was the worst, but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive, perhaps too permissive in retrospect. If the circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The circle is an idea, my dear, and an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. If you led all the Loyalists, why are you only First Enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no First Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected Circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia, again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago, to let her spend time gardening. I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin. But Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the Rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the Rebels. Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means protest abuses by the Templars, just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. Yes? 
Is there anything I can do to help your efforts at restoring the Circle? After the Circles fell, their libraries were plundered by scavengers. A thousand years of recorded knowledge in the hands of bandits. It makes me sick to think of it. I've received news that some tomes have been located, if you are interested in writing this wrong. I'll look into it for you. If you can take care of this matter, the Circle would be in your debt. Yes? I'd like to know more about you, Madame Vivienne. Whatever would you like to know. Your accent's not Orlesian. Where exactly are you from? I am from the Circle, my dear. One's country of origin rarely matters there. But if you must know, I was born in Wycombe in the Free Marches. I was sent to the Ostwick Circle, but I transferred to Montsimar while still an apprentice. I'm curious how a Circle Mage winds up a courtier. Nobody winds up at court, my dear. It takes a great deal of effort to arrive there. I caught the eye of Duke Bastien de Ghislaine, an advantageous connection that opened many doors. When the position of Enchanter to the Imperial Court became vacant, I was able to secure it. You're married to the Duke de Ghislaine? <laughs> of course not, my dear. Don't be ridiculous. Marriage is the business of alliance and inheritance. I'm Bastien's mistress. And what does the Duchess de Ghislaine think of this arrangement? We got along quite well. Duchess Nicoline and I used to host musical salons together. She was a great patron of the arts. She passed away from a fever a few years ago. Poor dear. What duties does a court enchanter have? I am tasked with providing assistance to the Empress on arcane matters. Most of my predecessors restricted this to lighting lamps and doing parlor tricks. In such troubled times as these, however, I provide political advice to Her Majesty on the subject of the Mage Rebellion. Reports of fade rifts and demons keep coming. The people are terrified, and it's only getting worse. The only thing that will calm their fears now is the hope that someone out there can save them. You have to be that someone. No one else has any power over the rifts. Seal them. Your legend will spread, and Thedas will learn to trust the Inquisition. Why do you want me to seek out the rebel mages? Why do you care? I've known mages. Some of them were better people than me. And yet I'm free and they're not. It's not right. They called you the left hand of the divine. That they did. What of it? I'd like to hear about Justinia. What was she like? A friend. A mentor. Like me, she had secrets, made mistakes. It made her human. I think her followers responded to that. How did you and Justinia meet? I met her a long time ago, before she became divine. Before she was Justinia. When I met her, she was Mother Dorothea. I was at my lowest, broken lost and she saved me no no wait <laughs> she hates it when I say that I saved myself she just showed me it was possible was there something more than friendship between you you're asking if we were lovers typical I was devoted to her therefore it must be romantic Love is common. Love is simple. My bond with Justinia was something greater. She was a sister, a mother, a teacher. 
So to answer your question, yes, it was more than friendship. We'll talk more later. Yes? Anything I should know? I have nothing to report at the moment. They called you the left hand of the Divine. That they did? What of it? What exactly does the left hand of the Divine do? A Divine always has enemies. And Justinia had more than most. I protected her. I watched, had an ear to every door. I identified threats, and I dealt with them. Why did Justinia have so many enemies? There were many who felt she was unfit to be divine. She had a past, a worldly life. Unlike many, she wasn't given to the Chantry as a child. She chose it, and somehow that made her unworthy. And because they thought she was unworthy, they wished her harm. It sounds like you did some unscrupulous things as the left hand. Perhaps, but wouldn't you do anything to protect what you love? I could use the left hand of the Divine at my side out there. Every agent out in the world is my eyes, my ears, my blade. Wherever my people are, I am also. Coming with you, leaving my post, would blind and bound me. Do you see? What is the point of an Inquisition? Justinia would have started the Inquisition if the Divine Conclave failed to restore peace. She hoped that, with enough support, we could challenge the very tenets of the Chantry. She wanted the Chantry to treat the Mages fairly. But sometimes I wonder, why stop at Mages? The Chantry has committed many injustices. If we're going to change it, why not change the whole thing? <sighs> it's just a thought. None of this will be possible if we fail. Are you saying we'll fail without the Divine? I'm saying I thought it would be her leading us. Nothing more. We'll talk more later. I'm listening. Let's talk about you. Me? Bards tell tales. I bet you tell some good ones. There are plenty of tales in the library. Perhaps you should look for them there. What did you do before you worked for the Divine? I was a bard. An Olesian spy for many years. For a time, I also served a small cloister in Lothering. After the Blight, the Divine called on me to oversee her personal network. Can you teach me to be a bard? Being a bard is so much more than being a spy. It involves a keen understanding of politics. The ebb and flow of influence. The great game. The Bards is an intricate dance where a smile can be sharper than any dagger. The best way to learn is to immerse yourself in it. Perhaps when this is all over, I'll teach you. I should leave you to your work. We can always talk later. Did you need something? You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends. And on occasion, enemies. It's unavoidable. You seem to know Josephine quite well. I met her a long time ago. But we didn't become good friends until years later. After the Blight, in fact. I'd just returned to Val Rayo, and she welcomed me back by throwing a diplomatic ball. She was the Antivan ambassador at the time, you see. The ball was... All right. Too many politicians. At midnight, Josie and I left to find a real party. We've been friends ever since. 
What do you consider a real party? It's not a real party until someone's small clothes are pinned to a chantry board. And that's all I'm saying about it. You have a history with the Warden who entered the Blight, don't you? I count him among my closest friends. I still write to him for advice when I can. He hasn't replied to my letters in some time. I try not to worry about it. He can take care of himself. They say you spent some time in Lothering. Did you know the champion? We spoke a few times. I seldom left the Chantry, and we never became more than casual acquaintances. I saw more of the Hawk twins. Bethany in particular. She would spend time in meditation at the Chantry, and she seemed to like my stories. The other one, the young man, he was a little surly. I did encounter the champion again later in Kirkwall. Those were terrible times. Was this when the Chantry was destroyed? No, that happened later. But even then, the news coming out of Kirkwall was disheartening. There were some in Val Rayo who wanted the Divine to declare an exalted march on Kirkwall. Justina sent me there to see if that could be avoided, to gather evidence to calm those agitating for war. I guess it didn't matter in the end. We can continue this conversation later. You know where I am. I didn't mean anything by it. It's good to see us is all the Inquisition coming together. what you thought it would be? Never I think an Inquisition is a bit mumpy as to its ranks. Not even know what they're chasing. <laughs> Fair question for me as well, I suppose. Everybody following a rumor. At least I'm used to that. What do you think about the people who have gathered? Which? The ones who do things or the ones who give orders? What about Solus? Solus? <laughs> His head's crammed up a thousand years ago. Anything to say about Varric? Varric? Too clever. Always saying something, but never saying it straight. Thoughts about Cassandra? Not as buttoned up as she plays, right? Tough though. I'd stand behind her in front of anything. What's your opinion of Vivienne? She's a bitch. But she knows. It's better. What do you think about our spy master, ambassador, and commander? Liliana is pretty in places. I swear I've seen her too. Or heard she used to play. But that'd be mad. Now Josephine, she's as good at humbling her kind as I am. Just with less mess. She knows her business if you have to have it. And colours. I suppose if you want a jackboot, you get a big one so you can grow into it. Nice to hair, though. We'll talk later. Good, right? I'll be here. We'll have that. Can I get you anything? You said Liliana asked you to run an Inquisition tavern. How did you meet? Some luck, maybe. I managed the name back in Denrim. When I heard interesting gossip, I passed word to Liliana. Sometimes it was helpful. She asked if I wanted to own my own tavern, and I said yes. I didn't know that she meant this. What can you tell me about this area? Adan is Haven's apothecary. He's been making potions and tending to the wounded as best he can. Harris is the Inquisition smith. Whatever he can make you, Thren the quartermaster can probably find. And for anything fancier, you can try buying from Segrin. His prices aren't too high. Yes? Oh, there's also me knave. She studies beasts and things, as I understand. Farewell. Goodbye. What can I do for you? We'll talk later. Goodbye.
Segret asked, told me that he can't let the herbs go for anything less than eight. Fine. We'll gather our own. Tell Segret. He better hope he doesn't need a salve any time soon. something I want to know more about Red Lyrian I'll tell you what I can I think that's enough on Red Lyrian yeah not really my favorite subject need something can I ask you something Varric you want to talk about me I'm flattered also inclined toward extravagant lies thanks Varric no problem need something I read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. In the book, you say that first Enchanter Orsino turned himself into a giant monster made of corpses. How? Why? Do I look like an expert on magical weirdness to you? Well, I can't tell you how. The why, all I can say is he was desperate. There's no way Hawk really could have killed the Arishok. It would have started a war with the Kunari. I was told later that the Kunari disavowed his actions. Apparently, the Arishok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall, and the Kuhn didn't want another exalted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the Red Dreadnought away, they just said, We will never speak of this again. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. Where are the rest of Hawk's associates now? Meryl decided to look after the elves left homeless by the fighting. She's done a pretty good job of keeping them away from the mages and Templars, so far. I guess she has plenty of practice avoiding stupid human battles with her old Dalish clan. Fenris has kept himself busy, hunting down the Tevinter slavers who came south to prey on the refugees. I'm not sure exactly where he is at the moment. You can usually follow the trail of corpses, though. Isabella went back to the raiders. She's calling herself an admiral now. I don't know if she's actually in charge or just has a really big hat. Might be the same thing, honestly. Sebastian went back to Starkhaven. I'm sure he's boring all sorts of people there. Last I knew, Hawk's sister Bethany was doing something uh, wardeny near the Anderfell's border. Aveline is still guard captain. I'm pretty sure Kirkwall would fall into the sea if she quit her job. We are working together, after all. What would you like to know? All right. Where are you from? I grew up in Ferelden, near Holland. I was transferred to Kirkwall shortly after the Blight. This is the first I've returned in almost ten years. You haven't seen Ferelden in ten years. Are you glad to be back? I was not sorry to leave at the time. I did not expect to return. Now, between the Divine's murder and the breach, I've arrived to find nothing but chaos. You were in Ferelden during the Blight. Did you fight Darkspawn? No. I was stationed at Ferelden's Circle Tower. The Circle had troubles of its own. I... Remain there during the blight. What happened at the Circle Tower? 
You who survived the blight have fond memories of that time. I would prefer not to speak again. What was Kirkwall like? While I was there, Canari occupied and then attacked the city. The Viscount's murder caused political unrest. Relations between mages and Templars fell apart. An apostate blew up the Chantry, and the Knight Commander went mad. Other than that, it was fine. What happened between Kirkwall's mages and Templars? You were at the Conclave. You must have heard people speak of it. Yes, but you were there. There was tension between mages and Templars long before I arrived. Eventually, it reached a breaking point. There was fighting in the streets. Abominations began killing both sides. It was a nightmare. What happened then? The Templars should have restored order. The Red Lyrian had driven Knight Commander Meredith mad. She threatened to kill Kirkwall's champion, turned on her own men. I'm not sure how far she would have gone. Too far. So you opposed her? I stood with the champion against her, in the end. I should have seen through Meredith sooner. Varric's from Kirkwall. Did you two know each other? I knew he was friends with the champion of Kirkwall, but little else. We've spoken more since I joined the Inquisition, largely at the barracks assistance. Apparently, I spend too much time with a serious expression on my face, and it's bad for my health. I'll let you return to your work. Another time, then. Do you need something? Can you tell me more about the Seekers? The Seekers of Truth were born from the original Inquisition long ago, when it united with the Chantry. Seekers stood above the Templars, watching over them but also investigating magical events they couldn't handle. We were meant to be incorruptible, above reproach. How seldom does reality match the ideal? But what are Seekers exactly? Those who know anything of us think we are Templars. We do not use Lyrium, however. Our abilities are different, as was our original purpose. We disciplined the Templars and were accountable only to the Divine, and not even her, truthfully. So the Seekers commanded the Templars? No. The Order didn't assume command until after the Rebellion. The Templars have always feared us. When a Seeker arrived at a circle, they knew trouble was afoot. That kind of power is troubling. You begin to think you are the only one who can solve the world's problems. If you don't see a problem, it doesn't exist. If someone insists it does, they are the blind ones. Do you think that kind of problem could ever be fixed? Possibly. Though the Seekers themselves would need to change. They were clearly not willing to, even though they abandoned everything they stood for to avoid it. In my heart, I believe they can still be salvaged, but not by their own hand. Why did your order turn against the Chantry? We originally united with the Chantry through a treaty that stated they would keep mages under control. It was felt Most Holy had tacitly allowed the Circle of Magi to vote on its independence, thus breaking the treaty. The Seekers saw themselves as justified, and they led the Templars into a war of righteousness. You sound like you disagree. We knew what was happening at Kirkwall, where the Mage Rebellion began. We looked into reports of Knight Commander Meredith's harsh treatment of her charges years earlier. But we found so many shocking cases of magical corruption, it was decided her actions were justified. If we'd been there when it happened, if we'd looked harder at the root causes, to care a great deal about it. Too much, if you ask the rest of my order. When faced with a problem, the Seekers would close ranks and crush it. 
We would find an answer, but only once we felt we weren't being coerced. The moment the mages voted for independence, our response was predictable. It was difficult to watch. How does someone become a seeker? Most seekers begin training in their youth. I was much older, an exception due to my noble birth. We train rigorously for years. Our bodies and minds must be elastic to undergo the vigil, and most fail even then. Is the vigil some kind of initiation? It is the rite every seeker must go through in order to summon their gifts. A full year of fasting, prayer, and separation from all distractions, including other people. We empty ourselves of all emotion, focusing only on the purity of our devotion. And the moment it finally ends, it's wonderful. Faith realized. I cannot put it into words. Was it some kind of magic? I don't fully understand it, to be honest. If the vigil was not so arduous, I'd say more should attempt it. What if mages never needed to fear possession by demons? I'm told it is impossible, however. I suppose I'll never know the truth of it now. You mentioned that Seekers have different abilities than Templars. Entirely. A Templar's abilities come from Lyrium and are designed to hunt mages. Ours come from ritual and many years of dedicated training. We cannot be possessed by demons and are immune to mind control. Useful, considering our role. Seekers can gain other gifts. So that depends on the individual. What kind of gifts do you have? I can set delirium within a person's blood aflame. Both mages and Templars bend before my will. Some seekers use it to interrogate, others simply to paralyze. Once there was a seeker who could use it to kill. That particular gift is considered rare. I've no more questions. Yes? I have some more questions. Why am I not surprised? Tell me about your brother. I would prefer not to speak of Anthony. Another time, perhaps. I'll let you get back to work. Let all repeat the chant of light. Only the word dispels the darkness upon us. So if we get better horses, you think that'll make a difference? Master Dennett's horses in the hinterland are faster and better.
Another time, then. Need something? Let me know.
Researcher Minet believes these notes could assist you. something let me know Serve you well.
This might interest you, sir.
very wet. Good to have commerce restored. I've many goods here if you wish to trade. Bandits up ahead, or something anyway. They're blocking the road. You don't think they're bandits? Bandits wait until people are vulnerable, then hit them fast so nobody escapes. These bastards show themselves too early. They care more about driving people away than taking loot. They're either stupid, or they're more than just bandits. And they're too well armed for stupid. What can you tell me about the attackers on the road? Several groups. Some of them with bows. They've got better armor than most around here. It's too many for us. If you head out there, careful you don't get flanked. They don't take prisoners. Thanks for the warning.
Bandits ahead! According to my research, the ancient elves may have set up wards in Egypt. If we can find the artifacts they used, it may help strengthen this area against tears. I doubt that's the last of them. Duran Atishan. I did not expect to see another Dalish blood here. My name is Miris. By your weapons, I see you come ready for battle. Perhaps we face a common enemy in these demons. Are you fighting the demons on your own? Fighting the demons is pointless. There will always be more, and I have no means of closing the rifts. But I have heard of elven artifacts that measure the veil. They may tell us where new rifts will appear. I was not expecting so many demons, however. I believe one of the artifacts is nearby. Can you help me reach it? It sounds worth investigating. Thank you. It shouldn't be too much farther ahead. Thank you for joining me. I do not think I could have done this alone. What took you away from your clan? They were all killed by a demon that our Keeper was foolish enough to summon. I am the only survivor of Clan Vernon. I was searching for another clan that would take me in when the breach appeared. Now, I'm doing whatever I can to help with this madness. form of sympathetic magic, a memory of flame that burns in this world where the veil is thin. are interacting somehow with the flame from the torch. A weapon enchantment. This could be quite useful. Yes, the 
wards are helping to strengthen the veil. This area should be safer for travelers now. Well, that should prove useful. And it seems the ancestors left something for me as well. Interesting. I believe our alliance is concluded. Go in peace, stranger. Mahalani, Maglandeval, the Anasalim. Aye. Perhaps you're right. Here, take it. Go with Mithal's blessing.
So, set up camp or keep moving? Trust you, sir. I don't have time. Yes, sir. Taking flight!
can sense elven magic somewhere nearby. Your will be done. should help strengthen the veil.
placed a skull out here, and for what purpose? skull illuminates certain objects in the distance. I am not familiar with such magic. Of course, it had to be a skull that lights up creepy shit. That tower is impressive, even as a ruin. I wonder what dreams it might hold. Let's look around. Interesting. I cannot say what it is, but there must be a reason the skull illuminated the object.
Inquisition could determine the nature of these objects. Could make camp here. I've news, sir. That's the King's Road down there. I do not believe these are simply bandits. Their armor and training suggest something deeper.
Have you always lived alone? Out in the wilderness, as an apostate? For the most part. Would that not be incredibly trying? Such people can be trying. Mankind, most of all. That is an excellent point. There and there, no gaps. Remember how to carry your shields. You're not hiding, you're holding. Otherwise, it's useless. Blackwall? Warden Blackwall? You're not. How do you know my name? Who said. <laughs> That's it. Help or get out. We're dealing with these idiots first. Conscripts, here they come. Sorry, bastards. Good work, conscripts. Even if this shouldn't have happened, they could have... Well, thieves are made, not born. Take back what they stole. Go back to your families. You saved yourselves. You're no farmer. Why do you know my name? Who are you? I know your name because I'm an agent of the Inquisition. I'm investigating whether the disappearance of Wardens has anything to do with the murder of the Divine. Maker's balls. The Wardens and the Divine. That can't... No, you're asking so you don't really know. First off, I didn't know they disappeared. But we do that, right? No more blight, job done. Wardens are the first thing forgotten. But one thing I'll tell you, no warden killed the Divine. Our purpose isn't political. I'm not here to accuse, not yet. I just need information. I've only found you. Where are the rest? I haven't seen any wardens for months. I travel alone, recruiting. Not much interest because the Archdemon is a decade dead, and no need to conscript because there's no blight coming. Treaties give Wardens the right to take what we need, who we need. These idiots forced this fight, so I conscripted their victims. They had to do what I said, so I told them to stand. Next time, they won't need me. Grey Wardens can inspire, make you better than you think you are. I wasn't aware Grey Wardens could take whatever they want. It's complicated. If there's a Blight, everyone has to help the Aether to fight it. The treaties are ancient. Outside of Blights, it's as binding as a clever tongue can make it. 
Do you have any idea where the other Wardens could have gone? Maybe they returned to our stronghold at Weishaupt? That's in the Underfalls, a long way north. I don't really know. Can't imagine why they'd all disappear at once, let alone where they disappear to. Why haven't you gone missing like the rest of them? Well, maybe I was going to. Or maybe there's a new directive, but a runner got lost or something. My job was to recruit on my own. Plan to stay that way for months, years. It's been a pleasure, Warden Blackwall, but this didn't help at all. Inquisition. Agent, did you say? Hold a moment. The Divine is dead and the sky is torn. Events like these, thinking we're absent is almost as bad as thinking we're involved. If you're trying to put things right, maybe you need a Warden. Maybe you need me. The Inquisition needs all the support it can get. But what can one Grey Warden do? Save the fucking world if pressed. Look, maybe fighting demons from the sky isn't something I'm practiced at. But show me someone who is. And like I said, there are treaties. Maybe this isn't a blight, but it's bloody well a disaster. Some will honor them. Being a warden means something to a lot of people. Warden Blackwall, the Inquisition accepts your offer. Good to hear. We both need to know what's going on. And perhaps I've been keeping to myself for too long. This warden walks with the Inquisition. You're certain such a pairing is wise? It is simple math. Those men who came to speak to you, man, who were they? What do we do? The most holy is dead.
travel safely. Do you think you can have it done by midweek? That Quartermaster Threat understands that your work can't be rushed, Master Harry. Fine. Need something? Let me.
Well. Look at it. So much easier to ignore when it's far away. And to actually walk out of it, to be that close. If I hadn't been saved by the Inquisition soldiers, I don't know what would have happened. Inquisition soldiers? That's not what I've heard. I have to admit, I thought you'd be... Human? Yes. That's not surprising. Humans are everywhere. It's expected. It was a foolish thought. Should have known better than to say anything. It's what you do and how you do it that's important. Just one question then. How do you think you fit in with all this? I just want to help stop the war. Try to put things back in order. A worthy goal, one I'm happy to support. For me, I'll be satisfied so long as we find the bastards that killed the Divine. They owe us some answers. I've heard rumors of abandoned warden camps all over these parts. If we have time, I'd like to take a look, see if there's anything we can salvage. Let's talk about the Grey Wardens. You must know a lot about them. Wardens. I'm afraid we're less exciting than we seem. The Blight's been over for ten years. What do Wardens do when the world's not ending? There are still Darkspawn. Just because we killed so many in Ferelden doesn't mean they're gone. And the world is not so peaceful that there's no use for good men with swords. Sometimes you have to figure out for yourself what the pledge to protect others really means. It's not always about just archdemons and blights. Where were you during the blight? I was in Ferelden, on my own, like always. Quietly killed my fair share of Darkspawn, too. You haven't had contact with other wardens for a while. Why were you on your own? It's what I've always done. Recruitment only requires one man. Besides, I've always been a loner. Works best for everyone that way. So you have no idea where the rest of the Wardens are? Do you find that odd? The Blight is over. We don't need an organized force. 
And orders don't change much from day to day. <laughs> For the last thousand years or so, it's been just find Darkspawn, kill them, repeat as necessary. Let's continue this at another time. As you wish. I'll be here if you need me. I'm here. What do you think of the Inquisition? I expected more. More men. Better equipment. You may have Andraste's favor. But wars are won by men, soldiers. Brute force is not always the answer. There are plenty of other paths to victory. <laughs> True enough. Still, it never hurts to be prepared. One thing I will say about your men. They're passionate. Devoted. You inspire them. Build on that foundation. And you will have an army that makes nations tremble. What do you think about all this trouble between the Mages and Templars? Looking at it from where we stand, it seems inevitable. But that could be hindsight. How many of us actually saw it coming? Either way, I don't think the Chantry will ever recover. What do you think of Haven? It's a war camp that was once a pilgrim's refuge. It's the state of the world though, isn't it? Holy ground turned into a battlefield. Pity about that temple. Would have been nice to see it. What do you think of the Inquisition's cause? Restoring order is a goal I support wholeheartedly. But that's not the end of it, is it? Not by a half. The Lady Seeker believes we are restoring the Chantry. Others say it needs reform. I don't know where you stand on the matter, and I'll admit I haven't made up my mind either. What do you think of my advisors? Liliana seems... nice. Also a little frightening, but mostly nice. Does Liliana frighten you? Has she said anything to you? No, she hasn't said anything. I'd just rather not offend her. I don't want to wake up with a blade in my kidneys if I can help it. You must have some feelings about our friends. I fear for Cassandra sometimes, the way she throws herself into battle. I've never known a warrior like her. We should return to our duties. As you wish. You are, after all, in charge. Yes? I want to hear more about you. <laughs> Compared to yours, my life will seem dull indeed. Your name, Blackwall, doesn't sound Orlesian. Marcher, then. Ferelden. I was from the Free Marchers originally. Markham. That was a long time ago. Another life. I hear that many Wardens were once criminals. You're right. And when you join, your past is forgotten, so let's leave it that way. What did you do before you became a Warden? I was... a soldier. A, a nobody trained to wield a sword and follow orders. I grew weary of fighting other men's wars. So you became a Warden? More or less. Becoming a Grey Warden... The first time I felt like I mattered. The life I led before seems hollow in comparison. Perhaps one day it will fade away. Why did you join the Wardens? Because they remember honor and sacrifice. Words that have little meaning to the rest of us. Because they lay down their lives for those they have sworn to protect. We all need to believe there are such men in the world. I needed to believe I could be one of them. We can continue this discussion at another time. Very well. At your service. You're oddly charming for a man I found wandering the forest. I always thought myself more odd than charming. But I'll take a compliment from a lady. 
They're hard to come by these days. I also find your modesty endearing. And the praise keeps coming. So, is there something large and heavy you need moved? That would be a waste of your particular talents. Oh, really? You're much better suited to standing in front of dragons while they try to eat you. I have to say, my lady, you're unlike any woman I've ever met. I'm flattered you'd spend any time with me. I enjoy your company. Nothing right now. Perhaps in a bit. <laughs> 